All right, welcome everybody. You are here for the webinar, three reasons email marketing is the MVP of marketing. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into today's presentation. Have you ever won an award or maybe you gotten a trophy? It doesn't have to be now. It could have been when you were a child or something. Go ahead in the chat and boast about that. Tell me what it was. What award did you win? What trophy did you receive? Was it a gold star on an important quiz test? Was it maybe Little League football or something like that? Have you ever received an award? Just waiting to see if anybody's gonna drop something in there. Don't be afraid to, to boast about that and to show off a little bit. Tell us how successful you are and how successful you have been. Uh, for me, I remember starting at Eye Contact 10 years ago. In the first year, I was an account manager and I won an award for being an excellent account manager. I actually still have the award. This award is 10 years old and it's as heavy as a brick. I keep it on my shelf just to remind myself that I work with customers and I need to help them succeed. I'm very proud of the award that I've gotten and hopefully any awards that you've gotten, I hope that you're very proud of them as well. And Andrew's saying he's got one, Melissa, Emily as well. Appreciate you sharing. And yes, you need to be proud of these moments in your life when you do something successful. When it comes to marketing, a lot of times it's hard to measure what you're doing and, and maybe you don't know if you're being successful. Well, with email marketing, you're able to measure what you're doing. It's easy to use and most importantly, it's affordable. To me, email marketing wins the MVP award year in and year out when it comes to all the different channels and ways that you have to market your product and service. So think of email marketing as your MVP. My name is Hank Hoffmeyer. I'm the digital marketing infotainer. I like to make marketing fun and successful. Hopefully we'll meet that goal today and you'll walk away from today's session with a lot of great information to help you with your email marketing campaigns. Oh, and by the way, I'm the Senior Manager of Client Solutions for iContact and J2 Global, our parent company. And I do a lot of different things, but more importantly, I'm just here to help you learn about email marketing today. Another question, I told you I was warming you up for the Q&A section. This is going to be interactive and I want you to have kind of a dialogue with me. When you wake up in the morning, is the first thing you do is reach over to your nightstand and grab your phone to check email or social media? Let me know in the comments, yes or no. I'd like to know if that's something that you do. Colleen is a high school valedictorian. Colleen, congratulations. I did pretty well in school, but never got that honor there. And uh, Mary King got an award, as a, uh, won an interior decorator award, awesome. So the question is, do you check your email within say 15 minutes of waking up or the first thing? Most people are saying yes. Andrew, stop doing that. I applaud you, Andrew. There's not that many people that can hold back because 80% of us check our email within 15 minutes of waking up. That means they're probably looking in their inbox for emails from their boss, from their company, or from clients. Maybe I placed an order and I want a tracking number and I'll look for that. That's one of the first reasons why email marketing is a great channel to use. But to back this up a little bit further, Email marketing is 40% more effective than other marketing channels like social media, pay-per-click, and print advertising. 61% of American workers say email marketing is important to what they do. It helps them do their job, which means they're checking their email often, even after they wake up. And if you're in B2B, 83% of B2B marketers say email marketing is crucial to running their business and to making a profit. That tells you right there that we're in the running to be an MVP if you're an email marketer. 95% of online consumers use email. It's almost everybody. Anyone who has a phone, tablet, a computer, they pretty much have email, right? And they're checking their email. Another thing is email marketing, it works. It really does. 72% of consumers say email marketing is the preferred method of communication that they want to receive from brands that they do business with or that they buy from. Think about that. Email is not dying. You'll always see these blog articles, the death of email, you know, email's dying, social media is taking over. It's not happening, folks. Stay in the know. Maybe you're doing social media. If, if you're using social media, go ahead and drop that in the Q&A. Say what you're using, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, 
what is it? And, and if you want to get a little bit of a network going on, go ahead and drop some links in there. I want to check those out after the webinar and visit and see what you're doing on social media. And then the other folks will be encouraged to follow you and check out what you're doing. So go ahead and share that to everybody. What are some links to your social media profiles and what platforms are you on? And I'm just going to pause for a second and take a look. Facebook and Instagram from Beatrice. All right. Um, Emails really important is Andrew Sanders checking some of these comments. Really good stuff in here. Go ahead and uh, continue to see, uh, continue to post some of your links. I see those in here. Great. I'm going to check those out later because I think it's more important for me to talk to you about email marketing, but I want to see what you're doing on social later on. 44% of CMOs say they have not been able to measure the impact of their social media campaigns. I don't know if you feel the same way or not, but Every time I post and I want to measure it, I see how many likes and how many shares I got, but that's about all I see. 55% of advertising agencies say they can measure ROI somewhat. I don't just throw thousands of dollars at advertising or you know, doing stuff on social media. Let's see if it works. It's somewhat working. I think so. Email marketing is measurable, folks. You can go and send an email. Take a look at how well it's doing, your open rate, your click rate, and maybe some of the negative things like your bounce rate and your unsubscribe rate. You could see how well you're doing. And if you hook up Google Analytics, if you're e-commerce, you could actually see how much money you're making off of each individual email. Think about that, being able to holistically measure what you're doing. Wait, we live in a social media world. Everything's driven by what we do online. And email is kind of like a social media channel in a way. And we're going to get into some reasons why email marketing is the MVP as opposed to social media. But we need to take a step back and look at today's consumer. They're not just a consumer, they're an empowered consumer. We all have these little devices that fit in our hand where we can go and look up information, whether it's price comparison. Have you ever been in Walmart and looked up a product on Amazon to see if it's cheaper? You're going hands-on and you're looking for information that you want and that you need to make a decision on whether or not you want to buy from a company or not. We're smart. We know who to ask. We know what platforms to go to. Maybe it's Facebook if you're looking for a plumber in your area or maybe a new dentist or something like that. You're going to go on these channels and you're going to ask for these recommendations. Consumers are vocal. If we have a good experience or a bad experience, we're going to go to Yelp, we're going to go to Google, and we're going to go to Facebook, and we're going to leave positive and negative reviews. Consumers are committed. They'll give you their money. They'll give you their business as long as they're going to get value and a good deal in return. So remember that. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can buy products and services or buy something for someone else or just send messages. And more importantly, lately, we're concerned. With the pandemic going on, we're afraid of losing our job, getting a job if you don't have one now. We're worried about our health, worried about our friends and family, and more importantly, when can we go out to a restaurant and eat like normal again? Think about all these things that the empowered consumer has at their fingertips, as well as the concerns and the challenges they have when they're buying products and services. That's why we need to talk about how do you market to this empowered consumer that I talk about. What you want to do is give them what they want, where they want it. And I've already mentioned email marketing is the most crucial channel you can use, is the most important channel, is the most lucrative channel, the highest ROI. You should get about $43 to $44 for every dollar you spend with email marketing. I actually had somebody contact me once and said, hey, I paid your company $50. Doesn't that mean I'm supposed to get a check from you? Well, it doesn't work that way. What you need to do is send out emails drive purchases so that you make money. Email marketing is easy to use. Well, you might not think it's easy, but it's the easiest platform to use because there's, it's, there's a structure and it does not change rapidly. What you need to do just kind of stays the same. You create an email, you send it, and you track it. Simple enough. It's easy to implement and also easy to analyze your data, to look at your reporting and see what's going on. With social media, it's changing all the time. We have these algorithms that either punish or they reward your content. In other words, it may not be shown to a lot of people or they might show it to more people if it goes viral. And it's basically a popularity game. If you're putting out a lot of content and something goes viral, more of your content is viewed. If not, you're just posting to post, just for posting's sake. 
it can be confusing and challenging to use. But when it comes to email best practices and cost, email has established best practices that haven't really changed much over the years, making it easy to use. It's a pay-as-you-grow type of platform. The more email addresses you have, at some point you may need to upgrade, but not like social media where you're gonna be paying a lot of money. Let's look at that side of it. You know, best practices change all the time. You should put hashtags in your LinkedIn posts. Oh, you only should put five in there. Oh, now this week it's nine. If you're gonna have a link in your content for LinkedIn, it should be in the first comment, which now is debunked. Put it in the post. I actually had a great podcast episode recently with a LinkedIn expert that gave a bunch of tips. It's called Hank's Marketing and Business Tips. Feel free to check that out. The, this episode and the one coming up next week is all about LinkedIn if you wanna learn about that. Because we also need to talk about how social media is pay to play. Sure, Facebook will take content that you publish and put out there, but if you want it, show, want it shown to more people, you have to pay money. Maybe boost the post for $10 or run an ad for $250. I don't like that model. I'd rather just see how many subscribers I have or how many emails I want to send and pay based on that. For me, there are three keys to email marketing. Somebody said they're just getting started, so this is going to be important, but if you've been doing email for a while, these are reminders. You want to start out with a sign-up form. Have a sign-up form on your landing page or on your website so people can give you information to so you can start a relationship with them. And to start a relationship, really you only need the email address, but I'm going to add the first name as well. If you acquire the email address for first name, you can start sending relevant emails to people. If you have a long sign-up form and you're asking me for my first name, last name, email address, favorite color, last year's taxes, my children's uh, first and last names, as well as my favorite sport, I may not give that to you if you're just going to give me a coupon to buy shoes. Some industries can get away with giving a little bit more, especially if it's a quote like insurance. They may ask for a little bit more information, and that's okay. But really, the only thing you need is a first name and email address to start a relationship. Welcome emails. Okay, you have obtained the email address and the first name. You immediately want to send them an email saying, welcome, glad you're here. You signed up for my newsletter. I'm so happy I'm actually doing jumping jacks right now. And what you can do is send that out right away as an automated email to help set expectations. Thank you for coming aboard. Here's what you can expect. Simple as that, folks. And also, I always like to recommend having a couple different varieties of templates. In other words, don't have one template and send out just a change in content all the time because psychologically people are going to think it's very similar and repetitive and they're going to get bored and they're probably going to stop reading your email. So have a few different examples or a few different templates that you can use. And you know, forget about getting social because how can you really have a personal conversation with people on social media? Can you post to all your followers and personalize that message to them? Can you send a tweet out and personalize it with everybody's username? You have to do one off in the direct messages or a tweet for every person. Same thing with like Facebook and, and LinkedIn. But with email, you can have that one-on-one -on -one conversation, but yet send it in bulk. I can send it 10,000 people, but yet make it feel like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can inject the first name into the subject line or the body of the email. Maybe you are collecting more information, and I know, I know, I know. Hank said only an email address and first name, but later on, and I'm gonna tell you how, you can get more information from your subscribers to make your emails more personal. You can obtain birthday information so that you can send them a happy birthday email. You can include city. Maybe you do events or something in a geographical location. You wanna target people in a certain city. And by asking people for that data, you can target them more effectively and also inject that into the body or the subject line. Same thing with your products and services. If somebody's bought something or looked at something, you can inject that information into the email and into the subject line as well to make them think that you know about them and you have a relationship with them and they're gonna have that KLT, know, like, and trust. The first thing people see is the subject line. This is one of the most crucial parts of email marketing. 
you could personalize the subject line. Hank, comma, we have a sale today. That'd be a decent subject line, but maybe I'll spice it up with some emoji. It used to be if you put a lot of emoji in your emails or especially in the subject line, it might be get marked as spam. That's not the case these days, but the tip here is it should be relevant to your content and not be misleading and don't use 20 of them in the subject line. The optimal length for a subject line is six to 10 words in length. Otherwise, it might get cut off in the inbox and I might not see the whole thing. That might be embarrassing, or more importantly, you might leave certain important words off of your subject line. You need to be A-B testing your content as well. This is where you take 10% of your list and what you're gonna do is send one email with subject line. You're gonna take another 10% of that same list. You're gonna change that subject line up some and you're gonna send that out. So you have 10% and 10%. Wait about 24, maybe 48 hours, come back and see which email performed better. And maybe version B had 20% more opens. You'd go ahead and send that to the remaining 80% of your subscriber base. I had a client that worked with me once that said, I do not know why every marketer does not use split A-B testing all the time, because it's like getting free opens with every send. It's pretty much a true statement. There's something called a preheader. For me, a preheader is like what Robin is to Batman. They make up the dynamic duo. You send out an email and you have the subject line, hang comma, we have a sale today. Then the preheader, which is the first bit of text in your email, could be visible or not. That might say free shipping on orders $30 and over. Basically, it's an extension of your subject line. It allows you to get more visual in the inbox and tell people to open that email. Definitely want to use the preheader and you want to use it effectively. Let's talk about email, uh, welcome emails, that first element that I spoke about. You have a higher open rate when it comes to sending and automating those welcome emails. Higher open rate, higher click-through rate. 74% of consumers expect a welcome email, give them what they want. Again, average click-through rate is about 26% and they're 56% more effective than standard newsletters. I told you that welcome emails are important because it helps set that expectation, set the relationship, start the relationship, and helps you succeed more. There's nothing worse than signing up for a newsletter and waiting a week or two and then all of a sudden getting an email. I might not remember who you are. It's important as that. So look at some examples. Here we have no more rack on the left side. They give you $10 off when you spend 30 for signing up for their email. They tell you how things work for signing up. Hey, great, you signed up, here's some information. They're giving you some deals. And then also I love how they're putting the thank you from the CEO in here as well. And that's a nice little touch. Sir La Table in the middle, free shipping, general welcome email. And at the bottom, this is pre-pandemic, they're trying to drive traffic to their retail stores for workshops that they have about cooking. That's a great idea, especially if you have physical locations. And then on a, the right-hand side, we have Airbnb, kind of, hey, you signed up, why don't you add a profile photo and give us some more information and then you know, start planning your vacations. It's pretty simple and I just love the, the visuals on this one here. How many of you automate with your social media? I already asked you if you're on social media, I saw people on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, I'm not seeing any TikTok in here, folks. You might want to get on that bandwagon because it's a fast growing platform. Um, but if you're on social media, do you use automation? Do you use Hootsuite? Do you use Buffer? Do you use another tool to automate what you're doing? You probably do. There's probably a few of you that actually do that. Um, one person says only while they're on vacation. Uh, but there are a lot of companies that actually automate what they're doing. You could do that with email marketing as well. What you want to do is automate things to make things better and also make sure you're sending the right message at the right time to the right person. In short, marketing automation is convincing the right people to need what you provide at the right time. And the marketing automation helps you do that. With automation, you can nurture people with a sequence of the emails to tell them about your product and service. You could personalize the email to help increase engagement. And really, it helps you save time. The more time you can save, by automating some of your email marketing efforts, you can spend more time working on those social media channels that are a little bit daunting, a little bit hard to measure, and you have to throw a lot of money at. You can go over there and try to figure that out while your email marketing is like a machine and it just keeps working for you. 
let me give you some ideas with automation. You can send that welcome email. It's the first thing I want to encourage you to do if you're not doing. As soon as somebody signs up, let's go ahead and fire off that welcome email and welcome them to the family and tell them what they can expect. You can do a nurture series, and this would be a series of emails that go out over time. But you can also trigger emails based on events or data, something that's not happening or is happening or data you have or you don't have. In other words, you can send an email to someone and wait three days and check to see if they have not opened the email and then resend that same email with a different subject line because maybe you're going to catch them in the morning when they're waking up when they're actually looking in their inbox and then you'll get that open you know a simple automation sequence or series would be you have an audience you have a you know a form on your website your landing page wherever that is you're going to obtain that email and that first name you're going to send that welcome email and comma welcome to the family here's what you can expect blah 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 and I'm going to wait two days and it's going to kind of have information around here's what we do in the community, here's what we're about, here's our quality structure, FYI, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're going to wait a few more days and you can say here, here's how returns work, here's our support channels, here's how we want to help you, here's some reviews of our products and services. Then on day seven, maybe that's where you go ahead and ask for the sale, the emotional appeal. Please buy for me, I need your money. Well, maybe. You don't get that desperate, but what you're going to do in there is put the incentive. I don't know if you've ever read Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. If you haven't, I highly encourage it. It's basically saying provide value, 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 then ask for the sale. You need to do the same thing with email marketing. Every email that goes out should not be asking for a purchase or a conversion. You need to provide value so people keep coming back to you because you're a thought leader, you're helpful, you're providing great information and great deals. Think of it like a bank analogy. You want to make more deposits than you do withdrawals. And a deposit is offering value and giving information to people and they consume it. Then you make the withdrawal and ask for the conversion. So make sure you're making more deposits than making withdrawals because you do not want to overdraft your email marketing campaign account. Let's talk about segmentation. Segmentation is a filtered view of your email list. Let's say you have a list of subscribers and you're collecting location information like city uh, i'm near raleigh maybe I'm, I'm targeting people in raleigh because i'm going to speak at a conference in raleigh what i could do is make a filter or a segment of people in raleigh north carolina and send them a specific email because it's located in raleigh maybe 50 miles around something like that now, according to the DMA of the Digital Marketing Association, they have found that there's a certain percentage of increase in revenue from segmented campaigns. Now, Darren, I know you're on almost all my webinars. I think Colleen, too. I do not want you to answer this, but go ahead and guess in the Q&A section, what do you think is the percentage of increase that you should get with segmented campaigns? How much of an increase should you receive if you actually target your customers with specific content? We have 20%, Emily saying 60%, or 45%, Kevin saying 40. This always happens. I think there's maybe two times that I've used this slide where people have started in the triple numbers or triple digits. Let's go with triple digits. Just want a couple people to guess triple digits. 250% from Emily and Cassie, both the same number. Uh, that would be a tie if it was 250%. I really wish I could see your faces right now because this is the actual increase that you should receive if you're actually sending people the content that they want to receive. You should have a 760% increase in revenue from your email marketing campaigns. Now is where I should hear, wow, oh, I'm dead. That I haven't heard that one before. I've heard wow or oh my God. Yes, if you actually send people what they want, they're going to convert more, folks. There are four pillars of segmentation in my book, or what I like to say about segmentation. The first one's going to be geographic. We already covered that kind of. Where are they located? Are they in a certain country, a city, or maybe it's the density of that city? The next one would be demographic information, such as age, gender, income, education, occupation. Maybe I have an expensive product or service I want to offer, but I want to make sure I'm targeting people that can actually afford me or something like that. Then we have psychographic information. This is my favorite. This is lifestyle, values, concerns, 
personality, attitudes, and what I call AIO, or activities, interests, and opinions. This is where you get to pull on emotional heartstrings and really form relationships with people. Now, let me take a step back because early on, you, you heard me say you should only collect an email address and a first name, right? That's true. And how do you get this information, geographic, demographic, and psychographic information? Well, there's, there's a couple different ways. You can ask people to update their profile. I'm saying click here to update your profile, and you can have those, those fields be visible. You can use a landing page that connects to your email platform, say like eye contact, and you can update that. But the strongest way to get that data is going to be through surveys, like SurveyMonkey or something like that. Go ahead and ask people for this information. You'd be surprised if you say, hey, we wanna ask you a few questions so we can get to know you better, so that we can actually send you more relevant emails. You'd be surprised how many people actually do that for you. Or maybe you wanna incentivize people to take those surveys and it can be you know, a gift card or enter to win a gift card. It just depends on how important that data is to you. And the last one, final, fourth one is behavioral. What are people doing and what are people not doing? In other words, are people opening your emails or not opening your emails? I already mentioned uh, looking at people who have not opened an email. Maybe what you wanna do is take a look at people who have been on your list for six months and haven't opened an email in six months. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're going to send a series of emails asking people to come back. Um, list hygiene is important. I've actually done a couple webinars on deliverability and list hygiene. You should be looking at the people that have not opened an email for a long period of time that have been on your list for a long period of time. I like to say either just remove them and I'll pat you on the back if you do that, you'll actually get a trophy or an award for doing that. But what you can do is send a series of say three emails. The first email would be, are we breaking up? Question mark. I don't know about you, but if we're breaking up, I'm gonna open that email to find out why. And in there, you'll say something like, we've noticed you haven't opened our emails. We wanna make sure you wanna stay in the family. Click here to stay in the know or click here to be removed. However you want to facilitate that's fine. The next one will be, here's the divorce papers. We're serious. If you don't want to be on our email list, we don't want to spam you in the inbox. And then the last one would be like, signed, sealed, delivered. It's over. We're removing you at the end of the day today. Then you can actually even automate removing them from the list or from the account if you want. When you're targeting people, you want to make sure you know who your audience is. And you could do that through developing what's called personas. This is hey, I need to take a look at who my customers are. How do they act? What, what are their behaviors and demographics? You might have one, depending on what industry you're in. You might have 20. You really need to sit down and, and do this exercise. Let's take a look at my example here. Maybe I have two personas for what I sell or what products I offer. We have Sally, she's a young female. She likes outdoors, loves going hiking. She cooks at home and uh, lives on the West Coast and you know, pretty much that's her in a nutshell. Then we have Sam, he's a young male, loves technology, like me, eats out often, maybe it's Grubhub or Uber Eats, and he just gets meals or he goes out to eat, you know, pre-pandemic, and he lives on the East Coast. Now, here's a question, and I want you to answer it. Would I want to send Sally an email about the latest Apple technology, including all the technical specifications of what makes that laptop awesome, at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, would I want to send that email to Sally? And I'm waiting on you folks, it's quiz time. I'm just making sure you're, you're paying attention to me today. It's part of the thing that's going on here too. So no, 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 nobody said yes. I want to say yes or, or no with a caveat. If Sally was buying a gift for Sam, maybe you can get away with that, but you need to know that Sally's looking for a gift for Sam, and that would be done through surveys and gathering data, right? All right, I've been talking to you for a while about you know, what to do, and automation, all that, and, and we also talked about measuring is pretty easy with email marketing. Let me tell you a little bit about how to do that. So what you want to do is take a look at your, your results and get some benchmarks, and if you want, go ahead and chat. Let me know what your average open rate is, if you know what it is. Maybe it's like 50%, maybe it's 10%, 15 I just want to see where you're at and, and what you're doing. And, 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 and we can look at some data in a second, 25%. So pretty much Alexa is pretty close to the average benchmark of 20%. Your click rate should be about 5%. And your unsubscribe should be at 0.5%. And that means five per thousand. Hopefully that makes sense. Bounces, less than 1%. 
And then I, I always put on here as well, uh, spam complaints, it's not on this slide. And that should be one per thousand in folks. This is per ISP. In other words, for Gmail, one per thousand, for Yahoo, one per thousand, et cetera, et cetera. The negative ones keep low, positive ones, you want them to be higher. If you want industry specific metrics, go to smartinsights.com, use their search feature and just look for email marketing benchmarks. They'll give you a cool web page that lists a bunch of different industries and you can find out where you are, pat yourself on the back if you're doing awesome, but maybe what you can do is say, you know what, I need to prove a little bit and Hank told me some things today that I'm gonna try out. Email marketing is cross-channel. You can actually use it with social media or other methods of marketing. It fits into cross-channel marketing efforts even though it's not a social media channel. It's a team player. Like when we're talking about MVPs, you need to be a team player. And that's what email marketing is. It's a team player. What you need to do is use links to drive people back to your website or landing page with a form, especially if you run ads. And what you want to do, and the goal is to obtain the email address and the first name so that you can start that relationship. Basically, you can also do things in groups. Go out to LinkedIn, Facebook, join groups and have some discussion. Don't spam in there and say, go to my website, sign up for my newsletter, but have it try to come up in normal conversation. Helps you out, helps you grow your business. And folks, I remember there was a good deal of you on Instagram. If you're not using Linktree, go ahead and sign up for this because I'm not sure if you're aware, but in your bio, you can have one link and that might go to uh, your website and it might go to your YouTube channel. You really should have a bunch of links, and this is basically a microsite embedded in LinkedIn, I mean, in, in uh, Instagram. And when people click on your bio link, it brings up that page in Instagram. It even works on a desktop, but allows you to link to numerous locations as well. And one of them can be your landing page with your sign up form. Add social media channels to your emails to encourage people to follow you. So put the little icons and ask people to go to your social media channels and check you out and follow you there. Here's a couple of examples from Macon, Georgia and Grammarly. They're asking you to connect with them on social media. So you want to get social on email and tell them why they should sign up and then give them samples. You'll see the, the Twitter example on the bottom right there in Grammarly. Orange is the New Black does a great job promoting their channels. I love how they kind of separated them into little boxes. It's awesome. I love the design aspect of this one. Jewel Mint, Jewel Mint is running a contest and using social media. And you know what? They announced it in their email campaigns. And then Envision is using a tweet this link. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you like this email? Tweet it. Gets you more exposure. Drives people back to sign up for your newsletter. The email design conference, they have a tweet this and added a Twitter feed as well at the bottom. They added a little uh, embedded Twitter feed in there. It's pretty cool. Uh, Seamless has a tweet here in their uh, tweet this in their email and then Habitat for Humanities asking people to follow them on Facebook. Love the graphic on that one on the right hand side. Do you have a blog? If not, you should. You can add blog content to your email to get more readers. Email Monks and Astro do a great job of incorporating blog articles into their emails. You definitely want to highlight your blog in your emails. Don't forget that sign-up forms don't just have to live on your website at the top or bottom. You can use pop-ups or pop-overs, but be careful because you want to make sure that the pop-up doesn't take up a lot of real estate on the phone or on the desktop because I, th I don't remember what the, the percentage is, but if you cover up most of the content, Google's going to punish you and your SEO aspect is going to go down a little bit. I like to use something called exit intent technology on my website, hankhoffmeyer.com. If you go and look at my website, I want to give you a chance to learn about me, learn about what I do. And when you go to leave that web page to go to another page or close the browser, a pop up will come up and ask you to join my newsletter. That's a great way to start the conversation because you've already given them time to look at the content on your website. There's nothing worse than going to a website, five seconds later, a pop up comes up and asked me to join a newsletter. I didn't even get a chance to read anything on the web page. You know, there's numerous ways to add a call to action on the landing page or website. Do you want more traffic? I'm gonna give you information on how to do that from Neil Patel here. And put in your URL and you click continue and you're subscribed. Now maybe you do have that blog and you could do something called RSS to email. You could take your blog post and every time there's a new post, 
you can automatically have that sent out through email. Here's our latest post. And you can have a snippet of your article and then a click to read more button to drive people back to your blog. Here's a little pro tip for you. Maybe you have an audience of people that have not opened your email in six months and they've been in your account for six months. Did you know that you can upload those to Facebook as a custom audience and serve them ads? Maybe email is not their thing, but maybe Facebook is. You can go ahead and try to get more engagement on Facebook or drive them back to your emails because maybe those emails are going to spam and you wanna let them know about that. What you could do is serve an ad to these folks to try to make sure you get them back in the fold or engage with you where they want to engage. Also, you could do something called a lookalike audience. You could take your best performing email subscribers, people that are opening and clicking all the time, or maybe making purchases if you have that integrated, and you could say, I want more people that look like this. In other words, you're gonna upload that, that great MVP list of email subscribers, and what you're gonna do is tell Facebook to give you a lookalike audience, people that act and behave like those subscribers, and you can serve them ads to get them to sign up for your email newsletter. Any pay-per-click fans in the audience? Probably, we all know it's expensive, and what you wanna do is not just drive people back to your product or your service, you wanna obtain that email address. What you could do is, run a pay-per-click campaign, drive people back to your website and make sure that you have a form and an incentivization to get them to sign up. Also, did you know that Google allows you to put the form right within the ad? Pretty cool, right? Well, it's late in the game, folks. It's fourth quarter, game's on the line. And what I want you to do is create a winning content strategy and put your best player on the field, which is Twitter, right? No, wait, wait, we're talking about email marketing, right? So make sure you're using email marketing because it is the MVP of all marketing. So let's recap, and I wanna give you the MVP playbook. Email marketing is the best marketing channel. It's kind of like the best quarterback in the NFL. It's easy to use and obtain great results. It's not convoluted, hard to measure, and it's cross-channel. It supports all the other things you're doing and vice versa. And when we're talking about MVPs, and I asked you in the beginning, did you ever get a trophy? Did you ever get an award? Well, if you've never got one, I, I wanna give you one today because pretty much you came here, listen to me ramble on for roughly 45 minutes now about email marketing. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Let me know in the comments because I wanna know how effective I was today. And was I the MVP of speaking about email marketing this week, right? I know I can't be for the year or for last year because there's a lot of great folks out there to know about email marketing. But now you are inducted into the Eye Contact Email Marketing Hall of Fame, and you're all dubbed Eye Contact Email Marketing Experts, especially those that said that you use Eye Contact, and I asked you if you did, so thank you for everyone that is using Eye Contact. If you're not using Eye Contact, I hope you might take a look at how we can help you, especially with our superior customer service, phone, email, and chat support, as well as dedicated account managers and design staff in-house to help you create awesome emails. If you text Hank to 833-230-4722, what I want you to do is sign up for my journal. You can unsubscribe at any time. This is pretty much an email I send out on the first of every month around 6.30 a.m. because I want you to read it or look for it if, if you didn't get up yet. And it's just telling you a little bit about me, where I'm speaking, a little bit about eye contact, and more importantly, a lesson that I learned about business or a cool tool I found, and I want to convey that off to you. Kind of be your accountability partner manager and let you learn from things I've learned or mistakes that I've learned from along the way. And I, I sometimes include cool tools, books, and podcasts. I also want to give you Eye Contact's ultimate subject line guide, non-gated. In other words, you don't have to give us your email address for it. It has 501 examples of great performing emails as well as low performing emails. It's broken out by type of email and industry. We took a lot of time to put that resource together and I think it's very valuable. And the most important thing, I want to give you that honorary badge. So if you text Hank to 833-230-4722 um, today, you'll get this badge. Uh, if you want it in the future, you might have to ask for me physically because I have it set up in a way that only the people that learned live today and communicated with me in chat are going to get this honorary badge today. And also by signing up for my journal, you're gonna see how my automation works. 
And I also use an app called Bonjoro to personalize a video to send it back to everyone that signs up, welcoming you to the fold. And I wanna start a relationship with you and hopefully that you're gonna do great with the email marketing. And with that, let's talk about email marketing. Let's look at what questions you have or what challenges you might be facing and try to resolve those because we do have 15 minutes. And as a reminder, go into the questions and answer section and put your question in and we'll get started. I'm gonna pop out the questions over here so I can see them a little bit larger because I did see a couple questions coming in. And um, the hardest part about this is I've asked you so many questions, so I have to weed through this. Uh, but go ahead and start asking those questions and we'll go ahead and get to it. All right, I'm just looking through. All right. Just looking through a lot of great links in here, great. What would you do if people unsubscribe, but you need to reach them because they're in a program you offer? Is there a way to fix this on the back end? That is a tough question. Um, if they've unsubscribed, theoretically they've revoked your permission to send them an email. And as per can spam and you know GDPR, if you're in Europe, you're supposed to honor that. And what you could do is reach out to that person one off, call them or maybe use a different email address to send them an email and say, we noticed you were unsubscribed and we have something great that we want to tell you. Would it be okay if you resubscribe back? You can ask them to go to a previous email to resubscribe or there would be other ways. As long as we know that person wants to be added back, if it's in eye contact, we can add them back as long as we have that permission. But basically you would be violating these legislations if you went ahead and just change their status and send them an email. Uh, if you need further clarification on that, reach out to us directly. We'd be glad to help you. Bree asks, do you find design heavy emails get blocked in people's spam folder more than plain text emails? We have people opt into our email campaigns, but a lot of our people in IT and cybersecurity folks have very strong firewall, where the firewalls that block imagery. Uh, this is a tough one to unpack, and, and this is something I've covered a few times in different webinars about email deliverability. You definitely want to make sure you have a good text to image ratio. I don't think this is what's going on with your IT folks, but the average is 60 40 split. 60% of your email should be text, 40% should be image. Otherwise, the algorithm, especially like Gmail, might flag it as spam because what happens is spammers have stopped putting spam keywords in the sentences or in text, but have pretty much burned them into images which the algorithms cannot detect. Therefore, spammers can use all image emails with text on them to get you to buy their product services or to try to dupe you. Um, what you also need to do is make sure that your domain reputation is high. This means your domain, xyz.com, every time you send an email, it's being graded. Believe it or not, the good things that happen to the email, such as opens, clicks, forwards, tins, this is not spam, going into the spam folder and pulling it out, versus complaint, bounce, unsubscribe, and worse yet, ignoring your email brings down your domain reputation. I like to think of it as a credit score. The good things that happen, raise your credit score. The bad things that happen, lower it. And if you have a lower credit score, what can happen is your domain becomes blocked or becomes seen as being nefarious or uh, spammy and more of your emails go to spam and may get blocked as well. There's a little bit of what uh, the IP address, which is what your provider like iContact has, the, that's included in that reputation, but a lot of it lays on your your domain. Uh, Bree, if you have any specific questions around this, uh, please contact us if you're an iContact customer. We're happy to help you with that. A um, little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. How do I upload those to Facebook? Uh, you can just go to Facebook and the, there's a section, I believe, to upload custom audiences. And that's for Mia. If you need help, contact. if you reach out to our support, they might not know exactly what you're talking about, kind of, but just say, Hank said they're going to contact me and I'll be in touch with you. Uh, or feel free to email me, hank at uh, icontact.com. Be glad to try to help you out there. Uh, I don't know step by step right now, but it is fairly easy. You can even search for that. Facebook custom audience, and it should give you a link to right where you need to go. It's probably the easiest way to do that. Uh, Alicia, thanks for the uh, feedback that this webinar was really helpful. 
Recently, I've been getting signups that are suspicious with weird email addresses. Should I ignore those or what should I do? Well, you don't want to ignore those. Kind of you do. But usually this is what's called a bot attack. This is when programs go out on the internet, find a form, fill it out, and wreak havoc because your bounce rate's gonna go up or it may actually be an email address for someone that has that email address but they never signed up for your email and they mark it as spam. You always wanna use Google Captcha for that. That's that thing, are you a robot? You've probably seen that. We all hate it, but that's how you are protected and you can use that on eye contact. Uh, let us know if you have any questions on that or if you need to set that up somewhere else, let me know. A lot of great questions, guys, and I'm getting through these here, so great. Uh, Emily, what do you do if people unsubscribe, but you need to reach, oh, that's the same one, sorry. Uh, looks like it was in there twice. When I send an email to new contacts, my unsubscribe rates are higher. Is there a reason for this? It, it really depends. You know, is it, is there something different about when they signed up versus what they're getting? Did you promise them something they didn't get that? Are you sending your welcome email days late or something like that? I need some more clarification on that. Alexa, be glad to talk to you about that. Uh, Jennifer, you talked about email non-openers and whether they want to stay subscribed. How do you avoid that list receiving a high spam count? A lot of times when you do this, when you're looking for non-openers, a lot of them are going to ignore it. You don't normally get folks marking those as spam. It's either they're, it's already going to spam and they're, they're not going to see it. And you do want to remove them because then they become part of that disengaged portion of your list that can hurt you still. But then maybe you'll catch, I, I think the average is 2 to 3% of people actually engage back with list hygiene. But what you really need to do is remove those folks that are not engaged. This way, your ratio of engaged versus non-engaged gets better. And what's interesting is you go back and look at your metrics after you've done that, you'll see your open rate actually went up and you're looking at your true open rate because you do not need that dead weight on your list. You don't wanna have somebody on your list for two years that hasn't opened in two years and say, they're gonna buy from me at some point, I'm going to keep emailing them because they need me and I'm going to be there when they need me. The best thing about this, folks, is you can add them back down the road. All right. I would like to understand better about taking people on my list that are non-active and uploading them to Facebook. Same thing. I would just search for that and go to that section in Facebook, upload it. I'd be happy to help you out. We do partner with LeadsBridge. They can actually help you connect to Facebook and anyone you put on a specific list, if you set it up correctly, you can automatically send them to an audience. That can be your ad that would be uh, trying to get them to engage on Facebook. So number one, you can do it in Facebook by exporting it and importing it, or you can use a tool like LeadsBridge for that. Alicia says, any advice for formatting or sending marketing emails for events for vendors to sign up? Uh, marketing emails. Well, you want to make them look as good as possible and you want to put them as much value uh, in those emails and try to personalize it because there's nothing worse than getting generic emails from companies B2B and make it feel like they're just reaching out to 100,000 people, but yet they don't know who I am. As much personalization and warmth you can put in that email, the better. Why do our emails from my contact go to spam? That, that question could be asked from anybody using any platform it's not basically eye contact partially it could be as i mentioned with the ip and that's what we provide you but a lot of times it comes down to the sender the domain reputation and just uh, list hygiene practices and uh, and other things we'd love to take a look at this with you uh, i'll remember to try to reach out to you and I'll go over this with you to see if we can help you All right, any other questions? I think I've gotten through all the questions. A lot of times what I'll do is if I didn't get through all the questions, I will follow up, but I think I got to all those. And uh, this has been great. I appreciate everyone being so engaging and answering my questions and me getting to know where you're from. Looks like people from all over the country uh, were here today. And hopefully you understand that email marketing is the MVP of marketing. And hopefully you'll take a look at what you're doing a little bit more, maybe whether it's cross-channel, using automation, landing pages, maybe just designing a new template just to spruce things up. 
hopefully this season of email marketing will be the most successful for you because you are now an honorary email marketing expert and I have high expectations from you because you're now on team Hank and you should move forward doing really great this year with the email marketing. I'm here to help you. I contacts here to help you anything we can do. Let us know. And with that, I definitely want to say have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week, and most importantly, have a successful 2021. Till next time, folks, have a great day.